TCU has put together a season that comes straight out of a movie. Last year, they saw their winningest head coach in school history resign. They were picked to finish 7th in the Big 12 this season and lost their starting quarterback in the first game of the season. That is a recipe for disaster that would usually result in a team fighting for bowl eligibility. Instead, TCU will be playing in the college football playoffs and is led by a player who was a Heisman finalist but came into the season as a second string quarterback. But how did Sonny Dykes and TCU do it? Stay tuned to find out. The tail end of the Gary Patterson era saw TCU fall from a double digit winning team to a squad that failed to make a bowl game two of his last three seasons. The Patterson era ended with the Horned Frogs going 5-7, and 6-4, and four, and 3-5 and five to start the 2021 season. Rather than being fired, Patterson decided to step down. This was heartbreaking to watch coming from someone who has always had a sort of soft spot for TCU football. The nail in the coffin for Patterson came after TCU lost three straight conference games capped off by a tough loss to Kansas State, which saw frustrations mount on the sideline. Dave Wilson from ESPN wrote last October, tempers flared midway through the third quarter when the Horned Frogs' Josh Foster delivered a big hit on Thompson as he stepped out of bounds. Players from both teams joined the melee as TCU coaches tried in vain to intervene. Two of their players and one from Kansas State were ejected for throwing punches. A defensive-minded coach saw his defense struggle to get opponents off the field, and watched their offense fail to score. Patterson was the second longest tenured head coach, leading TCU to 17 bowl games during his tenure. To put that in perspective, TCU had only gone to 17 bowl games between 1896 till when he took over as head coach. TCU gave Patterson the opportunity to finish out the season, but he instead declined, choosing to step away. TCU Athletic Director Jeremiah Dunati told the press the story of Gary Patterson and the rise in the fortunes of the TCU football program over the last 20 years is clearly one of the most remarkable in the history of college football. We are grateful to have Gary and Kelsey Patterson and appreciate everything they meant to TCU and the Fort Worth community. Under his leadership, TCU has become a nationally recognized brand name in football and in collegiate athletics. Jerry Kill took over as interim head coach and led the Horned Frogs to a 2-2 record to end the season 5-7. Going to the 2021 coaching carousel, TCU needed to make the right hire to replace their legendary head coach. Coaches linked to the job were the likes of former TCU assistant Justin Fuente, former Nevada coach Jay Norvell, Billy Napier, and SMU coach Sonny Dykes. Dykes was viewed as the favorite to land the job, and he was the coach that seemed to make the most sense. ESPN's Adam Rittenberg wrote back in October, Several Power 5 schools will pursue Dykes in this cycle, including his alma mater, Texas Tech, but only one offers the location advantage that TCU does. Dykes, 51, lives within walking distance of SMU's campus and loves the area. While he might have to relocate closer to TCU's campus, it would not be a major move. He knows TCU's program after spending the 2017 season as an offensive analyst under Patterson and also brings knowledge of the Big 12, given his roots at Texas Tech and throughout the state. It's unlikely the September spat with Patterson or SMU's rivalry with TCU hurts Dyke's chances of taking the job. He should be the leading candidate here, and he would be wise to make the move, although SMU is willing to shell out big bucks to keep him on the hilltop. Sonny Dykes would ultimately be named the next head coach at TCU, but had major shoes to fill. I mean, how do you follow in the footsteps of a legendary head coach? Dykes felt like the right choice when you look at his roots. He is from Big Spring, Texas, and is the son of legendary coach Spike Dykes. He actually played baseball at Texas Tech and spent his first few years of coaching at J.J. Pierce High School and Navarro Junior College before being hired by Kentucky as a graduate assistant. In 2000, Dykes returned to Texas Tech, serving as a wide receivers coach before taking over as co-offensive coordinator in 2005 alongside Data Holgerson. The Red Raiders started the season 6-0 and would later play in the Cotton Bowl. Dykes would then join Mike Stoop's staff at Arizona as the offensive coordinator, where he continued to churn out highly ranked offenses. Dykes would become the head coach of Louisiana Tech before being hired at California in 2013. Things would not go well for Dykes at Cal, and he would eventually be fired in January of 2017, putting together a 19-30 record. He would serve as the offensive analyst for TCU in 2017 and became the head coach of SMU in 2018. Dykes turned the SMU program around, leading them to their first 10-win season since 1984, and in 2021, he brought in the school's highest-ranked recruiting class since the creation of 24-7 Sports in 1999. Dykes put together a high-powered offense at SMU and finished his time with the Mustangs with a 25-10 record. When it comes to replacing a legendary figure at a school, Dykes couldn't have done a better job. 
Going into the season, TCU was picked 7th in the Big 12, and many thought they would struggle to become bowl eligible. The Sunny Dykes era and the TCU offense would start out slow with the Horned Frogs failing to score any points in the first half against Colorado. Things would only get worse as when the team started to get any sort of momentum, starting quarterback Chandler Morris would leave with a knee injury. Max Duggan would come into the game and he wouldn't have blamed the fan base for losing hope. Duggan was a former four-star recruit from Iowa and chose the Horn Frogs over the likes of Nebraska, Georgia, and Iowa. He set the TCU freshman record for passing with 2,077 yards and 15 touchdowns, but could never take the Horn Frogs to the next level, although he showed flashes throughout his career. Going into this season, Duggan debated about transferring and maybe even stepping away from football after a nine-hour heart procedure, but decided to stay at TCU. What happened next is something out of a book or a movie. TCU would go on to beat Colorado, Tarleton State, and SMU behind strong offensive performances, but the Oklahoma game was viewed as the measuring stick on how good this team was actually going to be. Behind Duggan's nearly perfect game and a strong rushing performance by Kendra Miller, the Horn Frogs nearly had 700 yards of offense en route to a 55-24 bludgeoning of the Sooners, who were ranked 18th at the time. This made everybody reevaluate how they viewed the Horn Frogs this year, and the team kept putting together impressive win after impressive win. They would go on the road and beat 19th ranked Kansas the next week, and the following week had a thrilling comeback to beat 8th ranked Oklahoma State, 43-40 at home. They followed that comeback performance up with another comeback win the following week against 17th ranked Kansas State. Although they really didn't blow anybody out until the regular season finale against Iowa State, which they won 62-14, they continued to rise up the polls from 8th to 7th to 4th to eventually 3rd in the nation. They went into the Big 12 title game as one of the only undefeated teams in the nation and with only needing to do one thing to make the college football playoffs. Win the game. Although Heisman finalist Max Duggan would put the team on his back leaving it all on the field, TCU would lose to Kansas State in overtime. This left the door open for Ohio State and Alabama to jump the Horned Frogs in the final college football rankings. Luckily, USC lost to Utah in the Pac-12 title game and the committee kept TC ranked third, giving the state of Texas their first team to make the college football playoffs. After TC made the college football playoffs, Sonny Dykes told the Star-Telegram, it was about believing in the journey, believing in doing things the right way. You get rewarded by working really hard and carrying and emptying the tank every Saturday. Our guys have done an unbelievable job of doing that. It's a great lesson for them for the rest of their lives, about showing up every day and going to work. Max Duggan finished second in the Heisman voting behind Caleb Williams with 188 first place votes, while Dykes was named National Coach of the Year by the Walter Camp Football Foundation. He was also given a new contract, extending his deal through 2028, and that contract will make him one of the highest paid coaches in the Big 12. Going to the college football playoffs, TCU has to be the most battle tested team and is viewed as the underdog when compared to the three other teams. They are 8 1 in games decided by 10 points or less, and with quarterback Max Duggan, anything is possible. TCU averaged 40.3 points per game and they have an offensive style that could stress Michigan's defense, which allowed an average of 357.5 passing yards the last two weeks against Ohio State and Purdue. They will be competing against a team that knows how to run the ball though, which the Horned Frogs have struggled to stop, giving up 205 yards to Kansas State and 232 yards to Baylor. TCU plays Michigan in the Fiesta Bowl on New Year's Eve, kicking off at 4 p.m. Eastern. So I ask again, how do you follow in the footsteps of a legendary coach? Just look at what Sonny Dykes did. But what do you think? How far will TCU make it in the college football playoffs? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos right here. Don't forget to leave a like and to subscribe for more college football content. Thank you so much for watching. I could not be more thankful for y'all. You guys make this all possible for me. And as always, remember to embrace the grind.